Hi everybody. Welcome to Recreational Knitting. My name is Karen and this is where I talk to you about knitting and living in our RV. For those of you who are new, we live in a 39 foot motorhome um, and have been since December 2019. Um, our plans uh, weren't initially to do that, but uh, COVID hit and we've been out on the road um, in a quest to see, to be in all 48 states, um, lower, lower states. Um, and we're hitting the home stretch. We plan to be back in Florida by this December. And in the meantime, we're going to share with you our adventures and my knitting. Um, today is August the 2nd, 2022. And I'm going to try to break this up and clip it all together um, towards the end of the week. There's going to be some footage, some surprise. Uh, we're in Massachusetts and we are at the Salem Harbor, as you can see behind me. Uh, the clouds look a little um, angry at the moment. Uh, it was a beautiful day, absolutely a perfect day. We went to uh, Rockport and Gloucester up on Cape Ann, and it was wicked good. It was, those of you from the Mass area know, Wicked is in front of everything. It describes everything, whether it's Wicked good, Wicked bad, but mostly Wicked good. Um, so uh, today was Wicked good. We really enjoyed ourselves. We're gonna go out in about 10 minutes for a bike ride um, down to the downtown Salem. Witchy stuff, whatever um, is down there. I was there about 25 years ago um, when my youngest was maybe about six and uh, we did all the, you know, the witchy things at that point and the House of Seven Gables and, um, but it's really changed here in 25 years. Imagine that, so have I. Um, anyway, um, today was a good day. I don't have any knitting to show you at the present time. Um, I knit some on Luke's golf club, uh, had to rip it out. Um, I knit some on my socks, so I made a little bit of progress on that. Had to rip a little of that out. Ooh, my, the wind is coming and it blew my little tripod right over. Um, and I knit a little bit on a, my uh, oatmeal sweater this morning. Um, not enough to even show you, about three, four rounds, something like that. But um, maybe tomorrow I'll show you some actual uh, knitting and fiber. Um, towards the end of the week, uh, we're going to do some re something really, really special. And you'll be part of that. So stay tuned. In the meantime, make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the bells for the notification. All that stuff really works well. For my analytics, I'm having a 500 subscriber giveaway. And if you want more information, look below in the show notes. Um, make sure you go to, to episode 16 and like and subscribe that. And you have to comment to what yarn you want. Um, I'm picking from episode uh, 16. And that's it for today. We're off on a bike ride. See ya. Bye. Good morning. This is Sunday, August the 7th, and it's about 9.30 in the morning. Um, I'm coming to you from Hingham, Massachusetts today. This is Recreational Knitting, um, and I'm Karen. Uh, this is the place on the interwebs where I talk to you about my knitting, um, trying to keep myself accountable, um, showing you any new acquisitions from different parts of the country that I may get um, while living in our RV. Um, those are 
you that <sighs> words. Let's try this coffee. Those of you who are new to this podcast, there, I got it out. Thanks for stopping by and checking it out. And um, those of that you are the OGs, I thank you so much for being here and subscribing and liking and sharing and commenting. Um, it really makes the community grow. It makes the community um, more fun. I think that we all learn from each other. I miss uh, an actual physical knitting group. That's probably the thing, one of the things that I miss the most about being out on the road is that community. So you're providing that for me and um, hopefully this podcast provides that for some of you as well. That'd be great. So um, today's gonna be it. Uh, I didn't get to do several days of podcasting this week because life. Um, we had spotty internet where we were in Western Massachusetts and um, it just wasn't gonna happen very good. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I've been doing this week. And uh, I have no finished objects to show for it. So, but I do um, want you to know that I've done absolutely nothing on this rocket tee. I still only have one sleeve done. Um, with the I cord um, but today this is my goal today is to finish this sleeve and start on the neck and then we'll be deciding what kind of yarn it is I finish up with um, this is still pretty short for me I like things longer I'm not a crop top girl um, three babies and you know all that and I still haven't lost that baby weight anyway um so that's my goal for today is to, to, to try to do that so nothing on this I have made progress on some socks though they uh, as you have seen before I have a sock here no heel yet that I had already done and last week I had just barely uh, cast on for the second one. And I've gotten down to maybe a half an inch before I start the tail. So next week, if all goes well, I should have a, a pair of socks to show for you and a finished object, or at least close. I, I don't know. Um, I'm still working on uh, Luke's golf club covers. Let me show you those. It's a really kind of a pretty picture of these. This is called the Bubbles of Color Golf Club Cover. That's quite a mouthful. Bubbles of Color Golf Club Covers. Okay. Um, his are going to be um, like a cream color, black, and um, a pop of lime green because that's what his knit, uh, his knitting bag, yeah, his golf bag is. Um, I've had a horrible time with this. This is twisted rib, it's black, and it's acrylic, um, and it's like 100 degrees out. So there have been a lot of challenges just getting this on the needles as far as I have. I have to do this for seven inches. As you can see, it's about I don't know, four inches. So I still have a ways to go. This is not at all fun for me. I wish I'd gotten wool, but you know, I've got this now and I'm going to make two of them for him. So wish me luck, but that's all I've gotten so far. He hasn't played golf, so it's... If he decides to play golf this week, I'm in trouble. All right. Let me show you my other socks that I have been working on. This is, oh, and I forgot the pattern. Nope, it's in here. This is called the Crun Crunkle Socks, Crunkle Duck Socks by Bakery Bears. Let me get you the full picture there. 
Now, I have decided to stop my crunkles there because I dislike any kind of pattern except for rib on my foot in a shoe. So I'm not doing that part of it at all. But the last time I was here, I didn't do anything on it the week before last, but this week I've been working on it. So I'm getting close to um, decreasing for toe soon. And this is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners. I don't know the color, but it's really quite lovely. Really lovely. Um, if I had to pick one sock yarn, this would probably be it. It's just really, it's soft. You can still feel that nylon in there, but it's soft. And I know personally it wears very good. So yeah, if you haven't tried it, it might be something you'd like to try. And when I pull that out, one of my favorite tools, this is Susan Bates Silver, Silver Loom. These are great. Um, you can get them at Michael's, Walmart probably. I don't really know. I've ordered like 10 of them over the years, but they have a little point and a little crochet hook. And it helps if you drop a stitch. Um, great, great tool. Highly recommend, five stars. And I worked some on my sweater, my hot sweater. I don't know, you know, because nothing says work, work on a wool sweater like, you know, 100 degree weather. Um, yeah, so the last time, this is simply a raglan top-down sweater that I've been working on for a couple months, I guess. And I was here last week and I've made some significant progress. Um, kind of needed some really mindless knitting this week and this was it. Um, just lots of life things going on and we are coming into the area that my husband grew up in. And um, family. It's just a lot. <laughs> He's got a huge family and we're trying to, you know, see all of them. And so anyway, this is um, just a, a basic raglan sweater. Uh, it's made with Juniper Moon Farms Organic Merino in the sand color. Um, I love it. It's <sighs> wool fumes. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Sport weight. That's my favorite weight of yarn. Not too heavy. Um, not fingering. So that's, that's where I'm at. And I still have two balls that I've wound up after this one, so I'm going to have plenty of yarn. Um, I seem to always order or buy an extra skein. Anybody else do that? And then I regret it because then I have all these one skein, half skein leftovers. I want to thank everybody that responded to my question last week about my um, shawl that Oh, where's the picture of it? I thought that was it. Here it is. Exordium Shawl by Rebecca Pico. It's a paid for pattern. Um, I don't know whether you can see those details well. It's really pretty. It's really a pretty. This is my kind of pattern. I wanted to wanted it to be more tonal. Um, but as you know, uh, the two yarns that I picked 
could barely tell any difference. And I'm glad I switched, um, stash dove and found what I needed. Um, I'm using these two yarns, Emma's yarn, crazy beautiful color, super silky. And in the glamping colorway, bought this in Milwaukee in a beautiful little shop called Cream City Yarns. Highly recommend, five stars. And this is by one of my favorite dyers, Neighborhood Fiber Co. In the colorway Leakin Park. And this is Organic Merino. And this is her rustic fingering weight. And it's got 475 yards in it, which is for four ounces. This is hers, Leakin Park, and this is Glamping Emma's. This has a bit of cashmere in it. This is just merino. So those are the two colors that you helped me decide that I really do need to do this shawl in. So thank you. So I started, oh, I didn't put a progress keeper on it. Oh well, I can show you very quickly because it's where this starts, right here. It's how much I've done this week. And you can see the stitches there. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Thank you for helping me decide. I really appreciate it. Um, so that's what I've been on this week. I have no new acquisitions, which is pretty shocking considering what I did, but you'll see that um, at the end of this video. Um, just wanted to uh, reemphasize, watch the videos to the end because there's gonna be an announcement and there's gonna be a 500 uh, subscriber giveaway look below for the rules you will be able to only get this per um, particular giveaway if you're a u.s resident i apologize um, postage is just out of out of sight at this point um, so we'll keep it to the u.s <clears throat> and um the next one <clears throat> we'll have <clears throat> probably a Ravelry pattern prize for you. So um, when we get to uh, 750 subscribers, um, I'm determined to grow this channel and make it relevant for those of you that just want to sit and enjoy some nature and knitting and acquisitions along the way. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I'll take a sip of coffee. <clears throat> there we go I think we got it um, next time I'll probably have some finished objects and maybe even some new acquisitions you never know we are now entering the Cape Cod uh, feature of our trip We'll be in the Cape Cod area for, well, we're here now, um, kind of. We'll be here for close to two weeks. Um, we have tons of family in the Boston, Plymouth, Newport, Rhode Island area, Hartford, Connecticut. So we'll be in this area for a while. It would be lovely if we were here in October and you could see all the foliage, but that's not going to happen. We'll be in um, probably Maryland and maybe Virginia at that point. Our first goal was to travel south and see, you know, as the foliage happens. But bad timing. That we can't get reservations. It's extremely difficult to find some reservations for um, any place in the Northeast. So I feel fortunate that we've 
gotten what we've gotten and we're booked out until mid-September now. So, uh, what have we done this week? We've uh, done a lot of bike riding. We've uh, done a lot of um, touring this week. My husband grew up in Massachusetts and had never been in the um, Western Massachusetts area. So we did a lot of that. And we visited um, Northampton and Amherst, uh, which are beautiful towns. Uh, got the best tuna melts that a girl can hope for. And now that we're on the South Shore of Boston, we are now on the South Shore tour. And what that means is my husband is determined to try a South Shore pizza every day. Um, they make them different here. Um, they're wonderful. We had one last night and I'll try to insert a picture here. And it was amazing. The best pizza I have ever eaten. Um, and if you're from this area, you know what I'm talking about. They're bar pizzas and they're about this big and they're just amazing. So if you ever get on the South Shore of Boston, that whole area of Plymouth, um, north and south of Plymouth, um, has a tremendous amount of bar pizzas that are to die for, truly. <clears throat> These people are connoisseurs when it comes to pizza. <laughs> so, with that, I'll leave you a piece of, uh, a picture of a piece of pizza here. And remember, watch to the end to see what you can win. Bye. Have a great week.
Thank you.